We're at it again. Welcome to the Trisprina Show <laughs> on a Thursday. This is going to be a really good one, and I love that Elise put in the chat. They're all really good ones. <laughs> this one is going to be three simple Qigong moves that everyone should know yes. for pain, stiffness, and fatigue. Because who doesn't have one of those? <laughs> It's the, the trifecta that sometimes uh, works against us. We wake up in the morning, achy, stiff, maybe got a little bit of pain, maybe we've got a little bit of low energy, and uh, we can turn that around with these simple moves. So this will be great. Hi, everybody. Let's connect. Uh, oh, my goodness. So many beautiful friends that we know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Joanna. Hi, Gail. Hi, Carol. Judith is here. Welcome, Kate. Great to be with you guys. It's date night, so we're all having a little date together. We'll be here for about 30, 40 minutes having some fun. And I got a new ring today. I won't talk too much about it, but... All the single ladies. All the single ladies. Oh, oh, oh. oh we got to do that, right? No, no. Oh, oh, oh. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I got my new aura ring. So stay tuned for updates on how effective this is at... Uh, measuring sleep and heart rate variability and all that good stuff. The more we can get information about our body, the more mastery we can gain. So, I use my Apple watch. <laughs> just something we're, that we're looking into. Okay, so <laughs> hi, Bonnie Carney. Hi, Carol. We love you too, Carol. Thank you for the love. And <laughs> we love that someone, whoever that someone is. Okay, so... Oh, the someone who was running a little late. Oh, was that me? Did you share that in the chat? I said someone. Well, somebody was getting the show together and making the artwork and, uh, yeah. No judges. No judgments. No judges. I just was a busy boy. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, what we're doing. Okay. Why these moves? Well, one thing that we're discovering through years and years of practice is that people say things to us like, you guys still seem pretty frisky in your 50s. <laughs> Sometimes they say... How do you have so much energy? And we've been getting uh, a few lately about like, why are you guys so happy? Mm -hmm. In fact, we got invited to be in a docu-series, which we leave for tomorrow in Utah called Hacking Happiness. And so what's up? Like, why are we getting all these lovely comments? And I bet you're getting them too when you are consistently working with your energy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really what it is, is there's this healthy flow of energy that we're connecting to this stream, if you will, and it's bringing the body back to life. It's creating the smiles. Yeah. There's a vibrance. There's a glow. And I'll, I'll land on this moment here, the glow. The glow is something known as Shen. So Shen is when your mind and your heart are connected. It's like a coherent state between the two. And Qigong creates this and it opens the heart. And they say that the Shen rises up and creates the glow. So maybe that's what people are picking mm -hmm. up in you yeah. when they're like, what's up with you? Yeah, and, there's, and there's, there's two attitudes that happen sometimes, right? When you're when you are aligned and you're glowing and you're just emitting this happiness, you are in a state of happiness. You're not just like emotionally, oh, I'm happy and then I tripped and now I'm sad, right? It's like this, this state of happiness is these beautiful people will be like, what's up with you? I'll have what you're having. Yeah. What's the buzz? And then there might be some other people that are like, <sighs> you think you're all that. What, like, <laughs> why are you so phony? The world uh, is sad. The world yes. sucks. Why are you pretending? Pretending to be why all are happy. You, why are you living in airy fairy? So <laughs> it's, it's a very beautiful thing to, to let all of those reactions from other people feed your happiness. Yeah. Feed your happiness, feed your compassion and, and your sense of humor. There's nothing that makes us happier than being with you guys, just FYI. You must be like filled with Shen because it's so fun to connect with you. It's the energy. It's the communing. It's it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have an opportunity for all of us to connect and commune at a much deeper level. I don't have a special link or anything yeah, to share with you. I can make it. Oh. <laughs> uh, why don't you tell them and I'll make it real quick. What, okay. What's going on? This is like being in the kitchen with the cooks. He's going to whip it up really I, quick. I will whip it up while you share what well, we're doing. He's talking about our Alive and Thrive live <laughs> three-day virtual event. So the way that we're saying to think about this is imagine that you're coming to Austin, that we're going to spend three days in a deep dive immersive experience. Oh, and many experience. people here have been to Austin. That's right. 
you guys know what that's like. Right? So, so not like a home study course where, you know, it, home study courses are great, but there's a difference between that and repetition and an experience that actually lifts you to that next level almost instantaneously. But here's the great part. You don't have to buy a plane ticket and <laughs> you don't have to get a hotel right. and you don't have to travel. We're all going to meet virtually and we're going to have this virtual live experience. And we've never done anything like this before. No. I mean, we've done trainings where we teach things and we coach people, but we've never provided the container for this up leveling of awakening a life, awakening a life force where creating an environment for healings to happen like very quickly and for mystical experiences. So that's what we're up to. We're super excited about it. Uh, we've never done it. We're going to see how it goes. We may or may not ever do it again. Um, there is an early bird special on that page right now that is 80% off. So if you would love to come, I would do that right away. Um, because it's, it's unbelievably, even if you can't even uh, only attend for one day, it is like so, so worth it. And there's a mystery bonus for you when you sign up. That's so. right. Because it's my birthday. The first day is April 7, 8, 9. Now, I want to comment. Um, we've had a lot of people um, write us back and say, well, you know, virtual events, there's that time zone thing. Well, when you travel somewhere, there's that time zone thing too. Right. Only it's not as convenient. So some people... Yeah, you might get up early, Bonnie Carney. <laughs> <laughs> She's right? all in. There's no question. And some people, you might be staying up late. So we we picked the time. We, we spoke to a lot of people, and they said the time that we, we chose is the best for the most people. Like a lot of the Europe Europeans, you'll be coming in at 4 in the afternoon and going to 11 at night. So I think it's going to work really well for everyone and for the transformation right? Going to bed on time and getting up on time has never caused me to have a spiritual awakening, but these three days might. So I just want you to like think about that when you hear your brain trying to logic things mm -hmm. away, right? It might be worth taking a day off from work. I sure would. You know what? For the, the price that we're opening the doors to this, and this is not a fluff event where it's a bunch of speakers talking at you. This mm -hmm. is real training. So those of you who have been through the five-day energy event, you know how much you enjoyed that. So many people tell us it's fantastic and it changes their lives. But that's like 60 to 90 minutes, you know, a day. We're talking about from the morning all the way into the later afternoon being together. Well, depending on where you are. <laughs> depending on where you are. But let's pretend that you're here in Austin with us. And... Many of you have been here, so you guys know what that's like to train with us for those deep dive extended hours. That's what I believe can make a huge difference, mm -hmm. right? Like a lot of people here are in our life school and that develops consistency. That's a beautiful thing. Like after this event, to be consistent, super important. Doing right. the five days, staying yeah. consistent, super important. Some people have home study courses, which is wonderful, but I have found that the biggest issue that people have with when they invest in a program is they need that, come on, let's go, let's train today, let's open that course up, let's yeah. stay motivated. Mm -hmm. We're gonna implant pure motivation in you for three days. Yep that it truly sticks mm -hmm. and then we'll support you afterwards. Yeah. So when, when I'm teaching a fitness class, like even this morning I was, I was working with a, a group on movement and, and let's say it's five minutes that we're going and at four minutes, you know, the, the mind is saying, Oh, come on, I'm done. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. All the benefit is in the last minute because the muscle is now fatigued. The muscle is saying, I'm done. This is what I normally do. So in order to get stronger, you just got to push it a little bit more. So even if you do five minutes of a certain exercise, sometimes the first four minutes are just to get to that last juicy mm. 60 seconds where all the transformation takes place. And that's what this reminds me of. Should I tell them about that dance story I told you earlier? Yes. Let me put this on the screen real quick. Thank you for this, Cindy. <laughs> she says, I can, can I just say how very much your smiling energizer face is truth and bright my day. Wait, wait, I got to put it back up. That was so cool. And it's all in caps, which I love. And then LOL, your energy is truly felt here far away Aww, since the very first time Cindy. I saw you online. Look Aww. at her energy. Yeah, you're vibrating. 
Okay, we have a cool story, and then we're going to get up and move. So if you don't know, there was a, a period of my life where I was a professional ballroom dancer. And first I was like competing with my partner as a professional, and then later I competed pro-am. So I would take a student, an amateur, and then I coached amateur couples, and then I coached children, and I did shows, and blah, blah, blah. So a lot. But in my journey... Um, I took a lot of lessons and I practiced a lot and I, I did a lot of VHS tapes and DVDs and I, I bought everything and I would watch all night. Like there was no TV. There was just studying these dance tapes and then practicing and slowly doing the drills in the day because I didn't start ballroom dancing till I was like almost 30 years old, right? I wasn't like some of the Russians and the Italians that started as kids. I had ballet, but lots of different, very, very different when you are going into ballroom. Not the Latin, but the ballroom. And so I was very good. And I, <laughs> I had done, I'm going to say a certain step, a waltz natural turn. I had done that step 10,000 times. I had taught thousands of people to do it. And I had done it with them thousands of times. And I brought in, we, me and my partner, we would bring in world champions to spend like two days in the studio with us, coaching us either as a couple or just me with the world champion or maybe a group of our students and they would work with. And every time I think about what I'm about to tell you, it's so emotional for me because it was a transformational experience. And the man's name is John Wood. He's from England. He was number three in the world for, for many years. And very, very funny man. And we got into, it's called getting into frame, which is you get into frame and you make contact. And it was towards the beginning of the lesson. And we were going to do a natural turn. A natural turn is six changes of weight. That's it. Prepare. One, two, three, four, five, six which is the most basic step that you can do in waltz. And I did that step with him. And I just started crying. And I was like, why am I so emotional? And it's like, my whole view of dancing in those six steps completely changed. He told me without words, everything that I was allowed to do that I didn't know was possible. He told me how I was allowed to follow without taking over the lead and yet be very active. He showed me with his body how to be more beautiful and more expressive. And he made me feel so completely taken care of as if I didn't have a care in the world. And yet at the same time, how to be more active than I ever thought possible in this completely different dimension of expression. And I've never danced the same sense. And I never think about dancing in the same way because of what happened to me in that moment. Wow. And that's immersion. And that's what I think about when I think about us coming together. And people are like, can't we have replays forever and ever? And I'm like, no, it's not a drill. It's a transformational experience where you see things and you feel things from a completely different experience perspective than you did before and all of a sudden the world is completely different because you're different from one shift of possibility that you you hadn't seen you just it's like we had been blind to it and then all of a sudden you see oh my gosh it was always there that's what I want for us in these three days an experience that's why I'm like show up as much as you can show up live be there a hundred percent so that something opens up for you that for someone else has always been there. And you get permission to be something you've never been before and to feel more beautiful and to see where you can be more active in your own life because you'll never be the same when something like that happens. It's such grace and it's such a gift. And that's what immersion is for me. It, it Sometimes it, it takes a while. It takes a weekend. It takes a whole freaking weekend sometimes. <laughs> When I hear her share that, and you guys can see the emotion that takes over, she shared this with me this morning in the kitchen, and she started to cry. And I was like, holy, wow. Like, that's an experience that obviously is so deep 
in her being at this point, in her body and her psyche. And she just one recollection of that taps her into this elevated emotion. And I said, well, that was transference. That person transferred an experience to you through touch, energy, presence, without words, as she said. That's possible. That, but what was needed? Receptivity. Because somebody else I showed up has probably had a similar opportunity with that person and did not have the same experience, right? Like, so each one of us has more capacity to experience more as we show up fully present. Mm -hmm. And so, and I got, I wasn't in my head. Right. That's why it was so powerful. I wasn't like, did he just turn an eighth of a degree body turns less? You weren't on your head. Yeah. It was, it was one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. It snuck up on me. It's not what I was expecting during that dance lesson. <laughs> you had no idea, but you showed up present. Yeah. So, and he'll never really know unless he watches the show. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. I, but that's sensitivity, right? And so I love seeing that in other humans as I know you do too because you were making people cry tonight. <laughs> but you could sense the, the vulnerability and the connection. So isn't that gorgeous? I think we long for moments like that and we love to meet other sensitive souls like that. That's what's so beautiful about this Satori community is you guys get it, and uh, we're so grateful yeah. that you do. I'm going to say that outside of meditation, I've never felt so beautiful as I did in those six changes of weight. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense, right? And that's why it's like this different dimension. Yeah. And, and experiences like that are so beautiful because they, they like open up and you get a peek at the possibility. And you might not get back there every time. You won't. But sometimes we're giving these little peaks, these little experiences that, that keep us going, that help us stay disciplined and consistent because we've, we smelled it, <laughs> we felt it, we heard it. Like, oh, I know it's there. Very cool. All right. We're going to kind of shift into some training. And there will be some wonderful training uh, that gets us ready for the event. We're putting that in place and we'll be um, communicating with you how that's going to happen. So those of you who have already registered for the event that we're talking about, like some, prep work. some preparation, getting your energy system ready for some of the awesome voltage that can pour through you and uh, just some of the things that we can all do mentally, intentionally to get the most out of three days. So this can help with that as well. So we've got three exercises, three simple Qigong moves for today. And they really do help with pain in the body and stiffness and low energy. So um, I'm going to get up, shift gears, going to demonstrate them for you. And uh, then who knows? Well, like, we've got we've got some time here. I'll go through them with you and then we'll take any questions. Why, why they're so effective? Yeah. I mean, I'll talk you guys through them as we do them. Okay. And I'll, I'll explain Let's as we go. Just set up the other mic and I'll move so the camera's focused on you. Okay. All right. So there's, as always, different degrees of mobility and flexibility that each one of us has. So I'll show you some variations. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch up our microphone so that it sounds better in the back of the room. And you guys can let Sabrina know if everything sounds okay starting now. All right, here we are. So let's dig in. I'm not sure how flexible you are right now. So please don't overextend or push yourself too hard. Uh, just do what we call layered learning, okay? Just in case there's somebody new to, to what we do. And Qigong's pretty easy. The first movement I'm gonna show you is called separating heaven and earth. And the reason for these techniques, the reason I think they're so powerful and why- Michelle Felsane says the sound is great. Michelle is here. <laughs> yeah, love it. Good to have you. Hi, darling. So <laughs> that's cool. It's a road shotgun microphone. Uh, what we're doing with Qigong is we're working not only on the energy system, but we're working through the body. So as you probably know, you got muscles all over your whole body, but your muscles and organs are contained inside something known as fascia. 
Now, fascia lies right below your skin. Your skin has three layers to it. The top layer is called the epidermis. Right underneath that where you have like glands, sweat glands and follicles, that's your dermis. And then below that was more adipose fatty tissue that stores a lot of energy. You have your hypodermis, okay? So these three layers of skin right below that is where we start getting into the fascia. And here's what's so interesting about fascia. Fascia connects the whole body and it enables you to move efficiently. And it has nerves that flow through it. It has lymph channels that flow through it. And what we're discovering is the meridian pathways, the ancient mapping ir internal irrigation system that the Qigong masters discovered thousands of years ago, parallel a lot of the fascial planes that we can see in the human body, which tells us that the qi channels or the meridians are flowing through that fascia. And that is why Qigong has so many beautiful extending, stretching like movements that open up the skin and the fascia, so the fascia becomes more fluid. Fascia is like a gelatinous gel-like material, but it can get dry and cracked like cracked leather. It can get very, very stiff. And as soon as that happens, it's gonna affect your chi flow. So what we're about to do is really great for the fascia, for the muscles, the ligaments, the tendons, the whole body, cool? All right, so here's what you do. You stand with your feet about shoulder width apart. And remember some core principles here, the long spine principle. You feel like there's a, a hook, we call it the sky hook on the top of your head, lifting you up. And then the rest of your body kind of hangs down like a marionette puppet. Imagine a puppet being lifted up and all his limbs are just completely relaxed. So you want your muscles to be so loose, kind of do this, I call this kelp. Remember when I would surf a lot, the kelp would just sort of float in water. Just float your muscles and allow them to feel like fruit hanging from a tree. That means no tension in the muscles whatsoever. Completely relaxed. So my, while you have that lifted sky hook, you also have your tailbone, which is like an anchor going down into the water. So it creates this bi-directional lengthening. And that is for your info highway, for your spine. You want to have really good connection between the brain, the body, and the breath. All right, so now you've got the long body, long spine. You're gonna take one arm and you're gonna press it up and turn the hand in. I'll show you this way, it's gonna go like that. You're gonna feel a stretch through all the skin and it's gonna come down the waistline here. And when it gets up high, we're even gonna look up towards it and lengthen a little bit more. You might feel some of the skin tugging around the hip and the tummy area because fascia and muscle gets tight. So you're lengthening, lengthening it. Now, these fascial planes also are connected to the organ systems in the body. So this particular stretch is for the stomach and the spleen organs. So this one goes up. Meanwhile, this one presses down. Now you wanna flex the palm. Flex the hand as much as you can. It's called taking out the slack. When you take out the slack, you get more tug on that fascia. That's what you want to stimulate your energy flow. So check it out. Feet naturally apart. I'm just going to place my hands like I've got a, an imaginary energy ball here. And watch. I'm going to go like that. Super simple. And I'm going to press up and press down. That bi-directional, long spine, looking up. Now really see if you can feel a lengthening through your waist here. And all the way through your arm. Get it as high as you can. I'm going to go back further so you can see my whole body. All the way up like that. You can even do this with your feet together if you feel more of a stretch. Now push down, look up. Okay, that's the basic premise. We'll do it a few times. We want to get the breath going. So watch, the arm floats down. Go right through that chi ball and switch to the other side. Push this one down firm, this one up. Reach, stretch, lengthen, and look up. Keep your breath flowing. All right, breathing in. We're going to go a little faster separating heaven and earth. Let's do a few more. Can you feel that? Notice the sensations in your body. This is so good for your spine. Lengthening the spine. Let's do the last two. What's the move called? Separating heaven and earth. It's one of my favorite movements as a warm-up for doing more weight training type moves because it just feel like it gets my spine open and that, that fascia, okay? That's movement number one. How are you doing? Did you get it? Do you have any questions? 
We're going to move on in a moment. There's not a lot of modifications needed for that one. I think just about everyone can do it. You can even do this one sitting in a chair without arm rests around you. You can, you can work that technique. Cool? All right. I'm going to jump into the next one. So this one, there's a few different ways to do it depending on your spinal flexibility. So there's a decent amount of focus on the spine. So we said for pain, for stiffness and energy, one of the most important things you can do to get natural energy is to get your spine open and flowing. Because at the base of the spine, right here, a couple things going on. You have an energy gate there called the Ming Men. And when that energy gate opens correctly, the Qi, the Kundalini, can go up the spine. And also around that area, you have your kidneys and your adrenal glands. And so those areas in the lower back can get a little bit tight. And so we're going to be doing things that help move and massage that, give you natural stimulation and energy flowing up the spine. So that's why we said this is for energy too. We're about to tap into that a little bit with this movement. Definitely going to open the spine and the fascia that comes through and across the body. I don't know if you've ever felt tight in your, in your chest or in your ribs or like awkward bending to get stuff. This is going to help so much with that. So you're rotating and you're going to get a nice spinal and rib rotation. So just do this simply. And <clears throat> there's not going to be a lot of torquing on your knees because what we're going to do is we're going to push our knees apart and we're actually going to bend down and push them out as we do this. Okay. So I just want you to kind of get the upper body going first. Now look at what we're doing. There's two ways that you can play with this one. You can put your hands on your knees, maybe even open your legs a little wider, what we call horse stance. And you're going to push this hand here and drop this shoulder down. And as you do that, I want you to take your head and gently look up. Keep breathing and then come out of it. You'll feel your rib cage wrapping round. You'll feel the lengthening through your spine because you're turning your head and that cervical spine as it turns is going to make the core of your spine, the center, turn as well. Let's try the other direction. Wrap this elbow forward. I'll show you from the side in a moment. Feel the ribs wrapping through. Release your breath. Turn your head and look up. Now, this is just a warm-up, right? I'll show you from the side. We can go much further in a moment. Okay, come out of it, relax, and then come back into it. So the hand on your leg is a support. It's helping you to support your whole back, and it's also helping you to turn, because you're going to push with this a little bit to help you turn. All right. That's the first layer of that exercise. Here's the next one. We're going to do with one arm across the body. There's actually going to be three versions of this. You're going to put your hand here. So before it was here and you were turning this way. Now you're going to put it on this side. And you, it's going to enable you to free this arm up, which is going to give us more fascial stretch through the forearm and through the muscles of the bicep and triceps. And you're going to be spiraling your shoulder and your whole arm. Think of it like a sponge or like a, a towel that's wet and you're wringing it out. That's what you're doing with your muscle and the fascia is you're squeezing and wringing it. And that's what's helping it to get more liquid and fluid. That's what you want. Okay, so check it out. Cross over here, horse stance still. Look at this arm. I'm just gonna put it to the back. It's almost your superhero move, okay? And rotate like we did here and come out of it. Now come up. It's right here in the center. Put your arm across. Reach this one up and look up towards your hand. Yeah, you can. Breathe to here. This is your heart center meditation posture. Release that breath and spiral your hand now. This is very helpful to have this support as your back is getting stronger as well. Breathe in and up. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Spiral and look up. I would recommend you take these slowly as your body gets more acclimated to that kind of rotation because think about it. When we were kids, we were twisting and turning and doing all kinds of cool stuff. 
But later in life, we got a little bit more linear in our approach to not only life, but exercise. Things are very linear. And the body is designed to spiral and rotate and energy moves in circles and spirals. So the more you spiral your body and find these circles, the more freedom you'll feel. It's an incredible thing. Let me take you one layer further with this particular exercise of opening and squeezing through the spine and the ribs, okay? So this is the advanced version. You'll start from your heart center uh, meditation. You're gonna spiral both arms this time. So now we're gonna get this one in the equation. It's almost like you're making a little bit of a bicep muscle and you're squeezing this one. So like that, try it on the other side. Think of, I'm gonna show off my muscle and then I'm gonna show off my tricep muscle. That's the way to remember what way to get your arms to go. Got it? Now look what's happening. <clears throat> we're in that strong base and we're gonna rotate through the core the head's gonna go, watch what the arms do. We can come out of it, breathe in and up. Take a moment, calibrate, notice how you feel. Breathe again, release the breath as you squeeze and spiral. Keep looking up. And that is so good for your back strength and flexibility. Go again. also working your legs and your booty a bit. A little more advanced, right? Now, if you're wondering what I'm doing with my breathing, I'll explain. Breathing and tightening engages your core, right? Diaphragmatic muscles all around the core. People brace like that when they lift something heavy because they're trying to stabilize their core and protect their spine. But that's not necessarily the most efficient thing for your energy flow because you're locking off your breath. So what we've discovered, this is something I discovered years ago as a martial artist, when you hit, you don't let all the breath out, but you let some of it go. And so if you do it in short little bursts, you can maintain the stability of the muscle structure, but you can keep the breath flowing. Make sense? It's like this really cool little hydraulic mechanism. So much fun stuff we can do with the body. So there you have three versions of exercise number two. They're saying it's opening them up. It's amazing. It's it an is. Incredible rotation. Isn't that awesome? Your body's designed for this stuff. We've got to get that mobility back. We do have a program coming out in the near future called Restore Ages Mobility, but it's not quite ready yet. But this will get you kind of going and we'll teach you some of that at the live event. Now I've got one more for you. And I thought long and hard about which is the third technique I'm gonna show you. And I realized I'm gonna show you both because they're connected. This is energy flowing down the legs. I know a lot of people have told us over the years I have poor circulation in my legs. Mm -hmm. Varicose veins showing up, poolings, uh, swelling in the ankles, having trouble with the feet, burning in the feet, neuropathy, like different things, right? Well, we're not doctors and we're not treating or prescribing anything. But what we want to give you is tools for you to apply and try for yourself to see if this doesn't move the needle. Because I know this, when you move your energy, a lot of stuff can change. And we have had so many reports from people telling us over the years, my pain is gone. I can feel my feet again. I can see with this eye, I can hear again, I can talk better. Like crazy cool stuff, right? So just flirt with it and see if you got any leg stuff, this might be awesome for you. Here's how you do it. You are feeding chi to your feet. You're going to just flex your foot like this. You're standing for this one. You could do it sitting as well. You're just flexing your foot. Why? Because you want to engage that fascia. You want to engage the skin and the muscle of the calf and the leg, the back of the leg in particular. So as you're here, <clears throat> you're breathing. So Qigong, as many layers to Qigong, they're slow, gentle, flowing and breathing. It's more internalized. And the things that we're doing today are a little bit more external. They're more in the physical, external body. So when you're doing Qigong, make sure you're learning both. You wanna make sure that you understand structure, form, posture, 
but you also want to understand breath and intention and flow and the channels, the gates, the chakras, the centers, all that internal irrigation. So you kind of got two aspects to the system. So as you're doing this one, there's a physical component and there's an energetic component. It's the same thing with the other two. You want to be visualizing the energy and the chi flowing. More on that at the event if you could join us. So here we go. You're putting your foot here. You're breathing in and you're feeling this energy is flowing down through your core into your leg and feeding all the way to your foot. Now the bottom of your feet have a gate. There are gates in your hands called the, uh, let's see, we got the Yong Quan in the feet and the Lao Gong in the hands. The fifth gate, just so for awareness, is the Bahwe, it's a crown. There's other gates, but these are important, like I told you about the Ming Men gate. <clears throat> so you're feeding Qi down the leg into the Yong Quan, the bottom of the foot. And then you just step onto it, come up, you rock backwards. I'll show you from the side. Now, mechanically what I'm feeling is a stretch through the hamstring, a stretch through the buttocks and the lower back. So here it is from the side, you're breathing in and up. Remember energy travels in circles, breath going out. Shh. Booty goes back a little. If you meet the queen, that would be a good move. This would be a wonderful <laughs> movement for the queen. No, yeah, funny. Um, so freaking good for tight arse. Okay, let's try the other side. Watch the foot. Okay, and then you just transfer when you come off of it and then you flex. Here we go, slow flow. Come up. You don't have to transfer onto the front, but I kind of like to make that weight shift. You're, you're using your hand and your mental awareness to send the energy down through the leg all the way into the bottom of the foot. The shift makes it feel like a circle completing. Yep, it's very much like this cool Aikido movement that we used to do when we would do warm-ups in, in Aikido. Okay, so feeding chi to the feet, to the yong kwan. Okay, without the stepping and then with the stepping. Breathe in and up. you're gonna really notice how this helps your lower back because tight hamstrings shorten the um, connection of the tissue in the lower back. They compress everything. So you really wanna have nice opened up hamstrings. Another thing you can do is to stretch your hip flexor. It's a little bit different. This is more of a, just an opener, <clears throat> but right through here and then reach up and stretch the fascia. These are great for your back, okay? Of course, we do both sides. Keep that knee over your ankle. As you go down, you lengthen up. It's the concept of the long spine. Okay, I know that was a bonus technique. Okay, the last part of this whole thing we're done is because this is to open up the hamstrings and get the energy flowing down into the bottom of the feet, you can just bring your legs together, bend your knees a little, put your hands right here, like that. Okay, and watch what we're gonna do. We're gonna wag our tail. That's how we're gonna start, wag our tail. And as we get better at this, we're going to straighten our legs more and wag our tail. And as we get better at this, we're gonna put our hands down lower and wag our tail. Now my legs are completely locked right now. You can do them bent, okay? But you want to eventually get to the point that your legs are more straight. And then here, wag your tail. Then your knees roll up. Can you demonstrate wagging your tail if you could only touch above your knees? Just here? Mm -hmm. So it's not an isolation. No, and lengthen your back here. Lengthen it. Like you're sticking your booty back. This, isn't there like a butler who stands like this? Yeah. A British butler? Richie Rich's butler. Doesn't he like hold something like this? Cadbury. Yeah, that. It's that. <laughs> okay. Rich, it's Richie Rich's butler. <laughs> What do you guys think? How are you feeling? Let's switch our mics back to the one here. Bye, Michelle. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> you sound like <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah.
And tonight, <laughs> Michelle is saying, stopping by. Brad Pitt just Brad stopped Pitt by. Brad Pitt just cruised in. <laughs> At least, uh, Sensei, I love how you told us that we are designed to twist and turn rather than just move um, linear. Yeah, it makes me so happy to be reminded of that. Our bodies are self-healing, self-regenerating, self-upgrading um, organisms if you give them the right movements and food, right? right? I mean, you can look at how animals move naturally, your cat, your dog, monkeys, they don't move like robots, right? They they curl. They move around. You yeah. tap you tap them on the on the butt. What does Bentley do? He goes what? You know he twists. <laughs> he doesn't like turn around and look us in the eye and say it. Why don't you show him what Bentley does? Bentley, if you if you're walking Bentley and you touch him on the behind, he's like this. Did you just touch me? Like if he could talk. That's what he would say. Like, he'll just look at you like... Did, did you touch my butt? You didn't just touch me, did you? <laughs> don't touch me. At least our king. dog, if you don't oh, know. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a king. How dare you touch me? That's exactly what he's like. <laughs> All right. Awesome. I uh, just want to remind you to grab your seat at the event right now. The early bird special is ridiculously reduced. 80% discount to attend an event that we have many times in the past in person charged what it is worth which is one thousand dollars you can get it right now for just one at the time of this recording it could go up at any moment just saying right now it's 197 it's an incredible deal for and three that's, days that's of for our community just for you guys coolio all right looks like you guys had a good time well the funniest part was gail asked me how to do it in a car and I assumed, right, this is assuming I assumed that she was parked in a parking lot. And I said, well, if you're in a parked car, grab the steering wheel and use it to brace the twist. And she goes, I'm a passenger. I said, abort the steering wheel idea. <laughs> yeah, don't grab the steering wheel. <laughs> uh, I do want to speak to Kimberly for a moment. She said, I've uh, twisted my spine all my life. Now I have osteoporosis in my spine. I'm told I shouldn't twist nor forward fold. Any thoughts about this? Again, not being doctors and not knowing anything about your spine, but I know about mine. So I will speak about my spine. I was told by doctors that my spine was so jacked up and there were so many things they saw in their x-rays and MRIs. And I was told not to move for a long time that I wouldn't be able to do martial arts anymore. And I've proven that that is all completely bogus and wrong. And what I have found is that movement is medicine and you don't have to push yourself into a reactive state where your brain goes, oh my God, this is too much, this is scary, mm. and cause your back to tighten up and spasm. But with gentle, loving movement and reorganizing the way you think about your body, I have found mm -hmm. that the tissues can change. And sending fresh blood and oxygen, right? Like when you when you move, you're sending nutrients throughout the body in the, in the blood. And when we just sit and we're stagnant, it, that doesn't happen. So even the most gentle movements can do so much for healing. That's right. This show will live on our website, satorimethod.com forward slash show. And that is how you will be able to find it uh, as of tomorrow or yeah. on our YouTube channel or also here uh, if you're on Facebook. In, in the Facebook. Facebook. In the Facebook business page. We try to put it in multiple places for mm -hmm. you. Awesome. All right. Well, we got to go pack because we're leaving for the movie, Hacking we're going Happiness. Going to uh, Salt Lake City. Yeah. We're going to share what we've learned about how to tap into to joy and love. It's kind of, I feel like they made this movie for us. <laughs> and they know it. They said, you guys are a total shoe. I have, I have one more story. <laughs> and it has to do with Hacking Happiness. Okay. Last story. Last story. Yeah. They, they like my stories. I love your stories. I just sit so, here in awe. So we, we have we have a few cars, right, in in the family that are in the house, right? There's five adults that live here. And I usually drive the SUV. And I drove it home night before last and I, I got home at like seven and I know knew I was the last one that Tristan hadn't driven it. He was driving the truck or the um, Mini Cooper. Yeah. But we woke up that morning and we have this landscape project going on and the dogs kind of can't just go free in the yard. We have to take them and pick everything up. And we were out of the special poo bags. 
So I just said, I'm just going to run get some because they give them away at the little park like a block away. They hand them out like yeah. lemonade. <laughs> yeah. They're in the little <laughs> dispenser, right? So the, the quickest key to grab was in a drawer right by the garage door. So I opened the drawer and it's Tristan's programmed key to the SUV. It's a BMW. And... So I get in it and, and the seats start, you know, like going back and down. So all of a sudden I'm little, I can't reach the pedals. But then this reggae music starts playing. Hey, man. And I was so curious. Bob Marley station. And I'm like, I, I don't even listen to, it wasn't even radio. It was. It's serious. Serious. Right. And I listen to really dorky talk radio. <laughs> yes, yeah, she does. And um, <laughs> he's always like, why are you listening to What this? is this? This is AM. <laughs> <laughs> I like listening to these educational shows when I drive. Anyway, I thought that was so interesting that the car knew that my tendency, me being Tristan in that moment, I'm going to play the songs you usually listen to when you drive. So it started playing the reggae and you usually like to sit down low and a little back, bit back further away. And I thought about my emotional set point, my energetic set point and how life responds to me. What is the song I usually play? Mm. Because life is going to put that tune on. Mm. And as far as hacking happiness, I was thinking one of my biggest ways is practice. Practice happiness. Mm. Sing that song on repeat. So when you get into the, the, the car of life with your key, that's the song that starts playing. It isn't like, oh, I got to tune the radio. That that's the song you tune to the most often. The most often you tune to the song of your heart, the song of your healing, and the song of your happiness. And that's the song that life plays back to you first because it knows that's your favorite song. And that I just really got a lot out of that. Like whatever song is playing when, when, you, when you have your key, can't blame anybody if you don't like the song. You it's programmed the, it's it. the one you've been singing most often. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just thought that was like really, really cool insight. It is awesome. I love your stories. <laughs> All right, you beautiful souls. Have an incredible rest of your uh, what is it, Thursday? And uh, we're gonna we're gonna sing it out. Yeah. Can't really sing this very well. <laughs> Beth and Doug could. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for being here. Love you guys. Bye now. Bye. I am always smiling. I'm